Hello inflation. You are like that relative that comes to visit and then never leaves. If you've never budgeted before or have been budgeting for years like I have, it is time to throw out those copy and paste budgets that you've been living on for the past months and years with your minimal amount allocated for gasoline and groceries and toss them out the nearest window because inflation is that relative that is here to stay. I have come up with 20 tips and tricks that you can add into your daily habits and spending to make your monthly money as inflation proof as possible. Number one, have you noticed that with gas prices rising, many gasoline stations have a cash price and a credit price. So those of us like me who have always paid with my debit card at the pump because I have four screaming little ones in the very back of my van, I am now seriously considering taking my gasoline budget out of my bank account and putting it into cash. That way I can get that few extra cents. Sometimes it is up to 10 cents a gallon off of the price of gasoline. When you're looking at $80 to fill your tank of gas like I am, every penny helps. Number two, many gas stations because of the competing prices have started coming out with loyalty cards just like they have in grocery stores that will get you three to five and maybe ten cents off each gallon of gasoline that you purchase. In addition to loyalty cards, certain grocery stores have their own gasoline. So Kroger for instance, that if you shop with Kroger and use your Kroger card, you get gasoline rewards. In our area, there's another couple of grocery stores that are partnered with national brand gasoline stations that I know people that have gotten up to 50 cents per gallon off of their gasoline just for shopping at specific grocery stores. If none of the gas stations near you have loyalty cards, consider using an app like Upside. Upside is an app that partners with local gas stations to give you cash back on the gasoline that you're purchasing. I've seen anywhere from five to 15 cents per gallon in cash back that you may be getting. Here's a picture that a friend of mine posted that's been using the Upside app, and so far she has almost $10 back in gasoline cash back. There's a link in the description box below to the Upside app, and please, if you don't mind, drop my referral code in there as you're downloading the app. Number three, fill your tank up at the coolest part of the day. And if you're walking on the surface of the sun like we are in the southern United States right now, that's going to be very early in the morning or after the sun goes down at night. And oftentimes, really not even then. It's still 90 degrees after the sun goes down, so I would say hit that alarm clock at 5 a.m. and be the first in line to the gas station. When you fill up at the coolest part of the day, you're getting more gasoline as you're filling up your tank, which means you're actually getting more for your money. If you haven't Googled the words gas prices near me recently, try it. Two days ago, I decided to test this myself. I was on my way home from running errands. The gasoline across the street from me at a relatively inexpensive, or what I thought inexpensive gas station was $4.19 a gallon. I was sitting at a red light and Googled gas station near me, and I found an alternative gas station on my way home whose gasoline was $3.94 a gallon. That is a savings of over 20 cents a gallon. And when you're talking about 70 to $100 to fill a gas tank, 20 cents per gallon makes a huge difference. I knew I had found the right gas station when I pulled up and every single pump at the gas station was full and there was a line to get to the pumps. It only took an extra minute to wait, but it was well worth getting that 20 cents off per gallon. The most important thing I can put on this list, and that is to save money. And when I say save, I mean save, 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 save. If it's $20 a pay period or $50 a pay period, save as much as you can to give yourself what I'm calling an inflation cushion. And here's a perfect example. One night I needed gas and this was in the period of time when I was going to the zero mark on my gas tank. I was on my way home from church. It was late. I had four kids in the car. I didn't want to stop. Gas was $3.93 a gallon at that point. When I woke up the next morning and went to get gas first thing on the way to take my kids to school, it was $4.25 a gallon. 
If I hadn't had a little bit of cushion in my bank accounts for that kind of inflation cushion, I wouldn't have been able to fill up my tank with gas that week because the price of gasoline had gone up more than 25 cents a gallon overnight. If you don't have an emergency fund, say first for an emergency fund. But if you do have a, an even a small emergency fund, start putting 20 to $50 every single pay period aside for an inflation cushion. If you thought at the beginning of the year that particular car repairs were gonna cost you $600, you can pretty much bet that when you go nine months into the year to the auto repair dealership, that you're going to need that inflation cushion that you've been saving to augment the cost of your car repair sinking fund. Number six is something I have done for many, many years, but is so important now. Consolidate all of the errands that you need to run in a week into one day. And not only that, map out the errands to where you're doing your errands in the most gasoline efficient way possible. I started consolidating my errands many years ago to help me combat impulse spending, which worked beautifully. But in this day and age, I am also making them as efficient as possible. That way I can minimize the amount of gasoline that I'm spending running those necessary weekly errands. Number seven is to run those errands that you are now running one day a week and the, in the most efficient manner is to run those errands as early in the morning as possible or again wait until after the sun goes down in the evening. When I get in my car to run errands often the inside of my car is well over a hundred degrees and I have to have the air conditioner on full blast for a significant amount of time just to get the car comfortable to ride in. Especially if I have my kids in the back seat it somehow is always hotter in the back seat than it is in the front seat and we don't want any heat strokes in the family. So we are now running our errands as early in the morning as possible so we can minimize the amount of air conditioner that we're using in the vehicle, which minimizes the amount of gas you're using on the errands. On the subject of air conditioners, let's swap over to your home air conditioner. Most homes, especially where I live, have central heating and cooling units. I live in a townhouse with central air conditioner. Unfortunately, our central AC does not work very well upstairs. It's easily 10 or 15 degrees hotter upstairs than it is downstairs. In order to make the upstairs livable during the day, we make sure to close all of the curtains and keep out as much sun as possible, which is very difficult for someone like me who thrives on sunlight. But when you're looking at 85 degree temperatures in the house, I'm willing to sacrifice a little sunlight. Number nine is along the same lines. We also now have either a ceiling fan or a small fan in each of the bedrooms. We keep those fans on all day long. If we didn't do number eight and number nine, when we go to bed in the evenings, our upstairs is almost too hot to sleep in. Our downstairs is always nice and cool, so we pretty much spend most of our day, if we're at home, in our downstairs space. Drawing the curtains closed in the hottest part of the day and leaving fans on allows me to be able to raise the temperature in the downstairs so we can save money on our electric bill, but still be able to go to bed at night without it being swelteringly hot upstairs. Number 10 is for those of us that have kids. If you have kids during this period of inflation, you know that every single activity has gone up in price. So it's time to put a few extra dollars in your budget for extra craft supplies, games, and yard equipment that are going to keep your kids happy and entertained while they are at home. I've put a few links in the description box below to my favorite things that I do to keep my kids busy during those long summertime days at home. Number 11, if you've added small luxuries back into your budget that you had taken out at certain times when your budget was a little tighter, it is time to remove those luxuries again from your budget. Here's an example from me. I put in this video right here, the 30 frugal tips and tricks that I do to save money. I put in this video that I had taken out going to the salon and getting my eyebrows waxed. I have those lovely eyebrows that grow all over my face and it's not very pretty. So I had, as, as my budget had loosened up over the years, put that back into my budget and I was going to my favorite place and spending that 10 or $15 for someone else to do it for me. It is a hated chore that I have, but it is necessary. I am now swapping back to my handy dandy and trusty sugar wax pen and doing that at home and saving myself the 10 to $15 a month. Number 12, consider taking on a side hustle. If you're already working a full-time job or a part-time job, there are so many different online ways that you can make money in your spare time. 
I know, especially if you're a parent, that spare time is something that is absolutely golden and you really hate to do anything that is going to take up that spare time. But even an extra $30 or $50 a week in your budget will help combat the inflation that you're experiencing in your grocery budget. Let me know in the comments below if small side hustles are something that you're interested in. I've got a long list of things that I've been looking into and I will put them in a separate video for y'all. Number 13, it is time to plug any and all loose holes in your bank accounts. And by loose holes, I mean, are you paying five to $10 a month for your bank to mail you a bank statement? Yeah, that's one of those sneaky little fees that they try to sneak in and and a lot, oftentimes people don't even notice that they're there unless they're balancing their checkbook every month. And a lot of people just check their bank balance every day and don't balance it. Or do you have subscriptions that are monthly, quarterly, whatever that you don't use anymore that would be really beneficial to get out of your bank account. If this sounds like you, it is time to print out those bank statements, grab a highlighter and, and get to work finding those areas of your bank account that can be tightened back up again. If doing things the pen and paper way is not your cup of tea, download the app Truebill. I've been using it for the last few months to help me find and get out of subscriptions that I had forgotten I even had. All you have to do is download and register. They will find the subscriptions for you, let them know that you want to cancel that subscription and they will handle the whole process for you. You may have to answer a couple of questions, but for the most part, it is hands off. Just a quick note, if I mention any company specifically in this video, I will make sure to put a link in the description box below so you don't have to go rewinding through the video to figure out exactly what I've been talking about. Now on to the thing that seems to be costing people more money by the day is our grocery and food budget. Number 14 is if you have not yet tried a grocery pickup service, whether it be from Walmart, Kroger, Publix, HEB, whatever it is that you use, give it a try. Most pickup services are free and it will take all of the temptation out of the impulse spending that you see as you're going through those well-planned grocery stores that really are designed to make you do the impulse spending. I have taken grocery pickup one step further and I'm now doing grocery pickup at multiple locations. So I plan all of my grocery pickups based off of the weekly ads that they are doing, whether it be buy one, get one free, or a certain dollar amount off. I'm scheduling all of my pickups for the same hour in that day, putting them on my errand day, and doing my grocery pickups on my way home from doing errands. In most towns, there are several grocery stores on the same road that all you have to do is go a few extra blocks to hit two grocery stores, and doing that has reduced about $25 a week so far since I started in my grocery budget. Number 15 is to buy whole cuts of meat. And by what I mean is if you're buying pork chops, buy a whole pork loin. If you're buying chicken, buy an entire chicken. Butchering your meat yourself is not hard at all. You can find YouTube videos all over YouTube if you are really uncertain how to do it. But for the most part, like with a pork loin, you just lay it out and slice the pork loin into chops as thin or as thick as you want them. You're paying less per pound for the meat because you're doing the butchering work at home yourself. Number 16 is to make more soups and casseroles. Soups and casseroles have always been a staple in our grocery budget because you can stretch that one or two pounds of meat that you're buying into multiple dishes over multiple nights, thereby reducing your grocery budget that you're spending in the week. I'm going to put a couple of my kids' favorite soup recipes in the description box below. Feel free to take them and run with them and try them at your house. Number 17 is something we have recently started in my house and that is to add some inexpensive but very filling sides into each of our meals. So I've never really served bread with our meals, but now bread and rolls are on our menu because they're very filling. In addition to bread, you could also consider adding rice, potatoes, or pasta. If all of those things seem a little unhealthy to you and you eat on the healthier side, consider adding beans or lentils instead of a carbohydrate side. They have a lot of nutritional value and they're also very filling. And to take adding beans into your meal just one step further, learn how to make dried beans. It's a little bit of extra work, but it saves you so much money over the canned or frozen varieties. Number 18, shop local farms. 
As many people have been picking up their city roots and buying small farms, I have seen small farm produce boxes pop up around me. There's one particular where I live that everyone just raves about and I'm going to give it a try. Most small farms that have any decent vegetable patch are going to have extra groceries. Even when I had a garden in the backyard, I had an overabundance of certain vegetables and I would sell them to the local grocery store and in trade for other types of vegetables that I needed to fill in. There are so many ways that you can find lower cost vegetables that are going to lower that grocery budget. Number 20 is one of my favorites and something that I used to do and I'm going to start doing again and that is buying ugly produce. And when I say ugly produce, I don't mean something that is rotten and is going to show up at your door and be nasty. I'm talking about a tomato that is not perfectly round or an apple that is not perfectly round or a carrot that is a little shorter than what a grocery store likes to see in their carrots that they sell on their on their shelf. Most ugly produce companies sell high quality ingredients, but they just don't pass muster when it comes to the looks department for most grocery store shelves. I have used Misfits Market in the past and been thoroughly pleased with every piece of produce that I received from them. There is a lot of variety that you can choose and the week before you pick and choose what goes into your box every single week. So as you're doing your meal plan, you just plan around what's going to be coming in your produce box. Again, I've stuck a link below in the description box for Misfits Market. I have personally used it and I really love it. Don't forget to like this video and comment below and share it with your friends. Every action that you do on this video really helps it with that lovely YouTube algorithm. And if you found these tips helpful, that will help other people get to see them as well. We've got many more budgeting tips that I'm going to be filming and sending your way. So subscribe to this channel if you have not already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a tick. All right, everybody, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Inflation has hit every household hard and it's going to continue and we just need to band together, share our ideas, and learn from each other in this difficult season. As always, it is a blessing to have you in my life and in my home and I cannot wait to see you again next week. See you next time.